welcome to the Brain Performance Booster, a five-part presentation designed to provide important basic education to help you understand the cause of disorders and the challenges associated with the brain so that you can make informed decisions to improve your thinking, emotions, moods, mental and physical health, learning, memory, motivation, behaviors, and relationships. I have the power to make it. Hear the tassa drums, the steel band playing, and the crowd roaring. See, the stadium is a sea of spectators wearing red as excitement fills the atmosphere. Thousands had come to support their soccer team in the match of their lives. As the game started, amid all the music and chanting, a voice could be heard shouting, Cashew nuts, peanuts, salt and fresh. It was the voice of a dignified female nut vendor in her early 60s. She bore the weight of two bags on her shoulders with a waiter in one hand. There she was, working hard to make a living for herself and daughter who was studying at college. I am that nuts vendor's daughter who has become a psychologist, a consultant, and author of several books on the therapeutic CDs. I understand your struggles to make it in life. That is why I want you to know that you have the power to make it a big time. Many people are making it. They are scraping through life for their mere existence. Just some food, clothes, and a place to live. However, for you, making it is not sufficient because you are special. You have got a potential for greatness, which you must explore at any cost. You have the potential to make a contribution to your community, country, and to the world, such as no one else could do. Therefore, you must say from this day, I will make it big time. To make it big time, you must recognize that you have the power to become the person of your dream, giving consideration to your personality and interest. This power is available. It is in your mind. Your brain is an amazing system that can accomplish fantastic things. It operates via a networking system in which there is a communication between the different parts. Thinking starts when sensory inputs such as sound, sight, smell, taste, and a touch from the environment are experienced. Your action to run and hide or run to your loved one will be determined by the interplay of past experiences with their accompanying emotions that influenced your level of judgment, problem solving, and decision making which affect your present behavior. In general, Nerves in sensory organs relay messages from the environment to the brainstem, which receives the message and relays it to brain cells or neurons in the emotional brain, then to the prefrontal cortex and back to the emotional brain where information is stored in the hippocampus. Brain Wiring and Rewiring Brain wiring is a term used to refer to how cells are connected to form networks, how messages are relayed from cell to cell, and the neurotransmitters or chemicals needed to make the transmission of information possible. 
Rewiring is disconnecting and replacing an existing wiring. Now, before any discussion on wiring, it is important to address issues concerning neurons or brain cells, which are central in the whole wiring process. A baby is born with 100 billion neurons, which increase exponentially during the first six years when the brain is fully hypnotic to facilitate rapid learning and development. For many years, up to the late 1990s, it was believed that brain cells die during the lifespan due to aging causing persons to lose the ability to perform the task of the lost cells and their networks. However, research close to the turn of the 21st century indicated growth of new brain cells or neurogenesis, which is possible throughout the lifespan. Further, Research indicates the significance of neuroplasticity, which suggests that the brain is plastic, constantly changing and adapting, even as I speak to you. This is significant because it suggests that you can cause new brain cell connections to be formed when you make an effort to do so through learning and practice then you have no excuse for personal advancement, learning, and excellence once you have a healthy, normal brain because you have the capacity to excel and can excel in anything you put your mind to do. Now that you know your brain can grow and change over time, you need to know how you can increase the function and the size of your hippocampus, which is the part of the limbic system that controls the spatial and long-term memory. In brain wiring, as cells connect via dendrites, the gray matter in the hippocampus, the brain expands and increases its capacity to learn and remember. However, stress, as a result of excess cortisol, reduces dendritic branching of neurons in the hippocampus to reduce adult neurogenesis, as well as neuroplasticity, and ultimately to suppress memory ability. This means that if you wanted to increase memory ability, you must practice stress reduction strategies that will reduce cortisol. When we eat, digestion of the food starts in the mouth, then to the esophagus, and makes its way to the stomach, small and large intestines. This digestive tract is referred to as the gut which consists of neurons like those of the spinal cord and houses 70% of the immune system. In the small and large intestines, there is a protective lining which is kept healthy by good bacteria. Gut bacteria or microbiome is involved in every aspect of metabolism, neurochemistry, absorption of nutrients, inflammation, and the immune system. However, antibiotics, stress, excess cortisol, coffee, and alcohol kill off good bacteria responsible for adequate blood flow levels. Then, when excess cortisol and harmful chemicals kill off good bacteria, blood flow is decreased, allowing an increase of bad bacteria and toxins that damage the gut lining and lead to problems of indigestion, increased inflammation, and the obstruction of the natural detoxification function 
to excrete toxins from the gut. Leaky gut is the result of damage to the digestive tract, allowing toxins, comprising bad bacteria and undigested food particles to pass through the gut lining. This is not normal, so the bacteria and food particles cause problems. Because the brain and gut communicate with each other via the vagus nerve, the immune system, the enteric nervous system, or through the microbial metabolic processes, the gut microbiome or gut bacteria is able to regulate the growth of neurons in the hippocampus. Noting that the hippocampus is located in the emotional brain and has both the spatial and long-term memory functions, it is important to have a healthy microbiome, free of toxins for memory. Toxins from the gut create excess inflammation, resulting in a leaky gut. The inflammation is then transported to the brain via the vagus nerve that connects the gut to the brain. There, excess inflammation makes a demand for cortisol. At that point, cortisol exceeds the amount necessary for optimum brain function, resulting in an increase of inflammation and decreased levels of the feel-good chemicals, serotonin, dopamine, GABA, and melatonin. This state of chemical imbalance leads to depression, anxiety, weight management issues, type 3 diabetes of the brain, problems with memory during study, dementia, ADHD, and the sex hormonal imbalance. Bear in mind that the gut has more serotonin and melatonin than the brain, so that it is important to keep the gut healthy for the secretion of adequate healthy brain chemicals and brain functioning. Significantly, the gut microbiome regulates the brain's immune system. The gut is connected to the liver and the white blood cells that are connected to the microglia, which is the brain's immune system. Significantly, because of the pituitary of the HPA axis is connected to the hypothalamus of the emotional brain, which communicates with the emotional part of the heart, a sex hormonal deficiency or imbalance may lead to heart problems, particularly with women in the perimenopausal stage. Moreover, stress, which increases cortisol in the function of the HPA axis, will further contribute to an imbalance of sex hormones to increase the possibilities of heart problems. Anxiety Panic Attack When I self-diagnosed as having panic attack, I knew what I had to do. My action plan included a leave of absence from my regular work and to vigorously treat the cause of panic attack to avoid having the disorder for the rest of my life. One thing was certain, as one who consumes only plant-based foods, I was never going to take psychotic drugs after successfully treating Marie and others for depression, using natural remedies and psychological counseling to address the cause of the problem. I gave careful consideration to the major causes of panic attack being nutritional deficiencies and the loss of electrolytes from my vomiting and a possible hormonal imbalance between estrogen and progesterone. Based on these facts, I did the following. 
I took a vitamin B complex supplement to reduce anxiety and to correct HPA dysregulation. Balanced my sex hormones by using evening primrose, black cohosh, and the soya beans, which is debatable, but it worked for me. I practice relaxation and meditation to reduce stress. Took an emotional and spiritual detox by eliminating negativity in my extremely stressful situation exacerbated by my inability to work. I worked on strengthening my heart by using hawthorn berry, cayenne pepper, and vitamin E supplement to reduce palpitations of the heart, as well as potassium from food to regulate blood pressure and stress levels, and to prevent anxiety. I increased the GABA and the tryptophan to stop the negative crazy mind talk, improve sleep, and reduce panic attacks. Having given consideration to my purpose in life, passion, and dream, I engaged in mindful repetition of a meaningful mantra for my survival. This means that I gave thought to the significance of the mantra every time I repeated it. My mantra was, and still is, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Psalm 118 verse 17 I practice self-regulation, particularly with respect to having regular meal times and going to bed at 9 o'clock every night. No excuses. I decided to trust God with all my problems that kept on intensifying during my illness. I refused to let my emotions influence and control what I thought about God's ability and power to fix my problems. I believed that He could fix them regardless of my feeling. So I left my problems with my forever daddy. Finally, I followed the depression prescription I gave Marie. Believe me, it was hard work for 18 months to eliminate all the symptoms, particularly the thoughts of dying and heart palpitations. Noting that the patient suffering from panic attack is out of control in his or her thinking, it is necessary to do a recording of a mantra, repeated seven times. Adding to the mantra, state that the illness will not lead to death. He or she is in a safe place, and with God, he or she can fight a panic attack and overcome it. Then, during the panic attack, play the recording several times, until the patient has regained calm and control. In the absence of a recording, you can speak a positive statement, which should be repeated in different tones of calm, yet firm, and reassuring. Then, lead the patient into deep breathing and stretching exercises. Think smart, be positive and creative. As I speak, thousands of neurons are connecting in your brain. Chemicals are flowing to determine your thoughts, which in turn determine the chemicals secreted. Dopamine, serotonin and oxytocin are providing you with the fuel to be motivated, calm and receptive to learning opportunities. Distorted thinking refers to beliefs, thoughts, or statements about self, other people, and the situations that are negative, inaccurate, unrealistic, non-current, or lacking evidence to prove credibility of thoughts expressed. Thus, these thoughts are self-defeating and debilitating, 
making it virtually impossible for persons to make progress in life. As a result, persons' health, relationships, education, and career are negatively affected. To correct all distorted thinking, it is important to ask yourself four pertinent questions. They are 1. Is this self-talk or belief my present state? 2. Is this self-talk or belief being realistic given the circumstances? 3. What is the evidence to substantiate my statement, belief or self-talk? And 4. What should be my new thought? Learn smart. When a person learns new information, the brain creates a new memory by forming a set of connections between nerve cells in different parts of the brain. As you use several methods utilizing your senses to learn and review subject material, there is an increase of dendritic pathways created in areas of the brain that store memory. This increase of dendritic pathways causes an increase of synaptic cell-to-cell -cell bridges and as a result, the information pathways increase and become stronger to ensure that you remember what you learned. It is important to note that the teacher's best efforts can only work as students practice self-regulation which is your ability to manage your time and life to create and to practice balance in the spiritual, physical, intellectual, social, and vocational areas of your life. In the working memory system, the temporal lobes of the limbic system have a time clock, which regulates time for hunger and thirst satisfaction as well as sleep and wake cycles to facilitate learning, memory, and behavior. Kinesthetic learning under the brain's time clock. Kinesthetic refers to movement and hands-on learning experiences for the secretion of healthy brain chemicals that give positive feelings about learning. As you learned, Exercise helps to grow the hippocampus in the brain to achieve the benefit of long-term memory. Exercise also allows oxygen to go to the brain, which will then release serotonin and dopamine to improve mood, cognitive performance, and learning. You can incorporate exercise and dance in study by doing them intermittently to create fun and laughter. As far as possible, experience the information in a lab, at home, or workplace. Of all the brain-based learning strategies, experience is the third most beneficial because it enriches the brain as information from the environment is relayed to most of the sensory organs and then to the brain, causing neurons to fire and release neurotransmitters. As a result, you will have positive emotions and increased learning abilities as the brain becomes more active, indicating growth. The brain's time clock. The brain does not easily remember information over several hours of sustained study. There are times when the brain switches off so that all study is futile. Therefore, it is important that you know when this occurs. You will notice that the time is longer or shorter for some areas of study, which depends on your natural abilities, interests, the teaching method, and environmental factors that positively or negatively affect your study. A general rule is as follows. Teach for 30-minute blocks of time. Offer the 30 minutes, 
Never spend more than 12 to 15 minutes utilizing focused attention while engaged in passive factual learning. However, the duration may be much longer for experiential learning, depending on the level of student involvement. Let me share with you the top four brain-based learning strategies from most to least effective as a standalone strategy. They are one, insulin control driven by lifestyle. Two, self-regulation. Three, experience. And four, test, retest. Just start these and you will see amazing improvements in your academic study. Thereafter, you can add other brain-based learning strategies for optimal brain performance. Your healthy brain has the potential to produce extraordinary accomplishments so that you can learn any subject material you want once you know how to make your brain work for you. As you have learned, the human brain has the amazing ability to adapt and change at any age via neuroplasticity so that when it is appropriately stimulated, your brain can form new cell connections and change existing cell connections both to form new communication pathways, thereby giving you more brain power. The secret of your learning and achieving lies in what you think. And what you think determines how you perform in your study, in your career, and in the pursuit of any goal. It is impossible to separate what you think from who you are, because who you are and are becoming come from your thinking brain, which is dependent on your lifestyle. Then, it is up to you to decide and to follow through with appropriate action to use your brain's potential for learning and memory so that you can excel in your academics, career, and job performance. Brain Health Recipes Preparing brain health food is easier than you think. For example, here is my green smoothie, rich in omega-3 and antioxidants to reduce inflammation and detox the body, thereby improving brain health. Next, we have my chocolate smoothie and my fruit smoothie cream. See the Brain Performance Booster Handbook for more brain health recipes including salad dressings, brain booster fudge, brain booster cookies, and my special fruit cake. In summary, to make your brain work for you, you need to remember to eat to control blood sugar levels. Eat a rainbow color, high fiber, and good fat diet. Stay hydrated. Detoxify your brain and body daily and manage stress and trauma, if necessary, with the help of a professional. Lower cortisol levels in your brain via stress management practices. Heal your gut and get rid of excess inflammation. Use the powerful brain boosters that include fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, spices, herbs, deep breathing, meditation, water, sunlight, positive thinking, and humor. These will improve your autoimmune system and your brain's lymphatic system. And engage in physical and brain exercises to increase your BDNF and help your brain grow and maintain health. Now, you know the significance of our mission statement. 
I have a healthy brain and I am using it to reach my full potential. I am determined to succeed. Where possible, I am seeking help and creating opportunities to overcome my special challenges in life and make my dream a reality. With God's help, I am succeeding.